Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Hawk Blogger Mornings. I am Brian Nemhauser. It's called Hawk Blogger Mornings because you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Hawk Blogger. It's been the moniker for a long time since before people actually knew what my real name was, but that has stuck. Hawk Blogger is still the name, it's still the moniker, and you can find me where you're looking for your Seahawks news buy it. And today is another of the episodes as we count down towards training camp, where you guys get to watch this all together for the first time, as I am not with you live. This is going to be a premiere that you get to watch together at the same time. Hopefully, you're enjoying these 8 a.m. sharp new content, new Seahawks content every single day, even when I'm not around. So hopefully, you're enjoying it today. We are going to talk about the top five training camp battles for the Seahawks. As we near towards training camp, it's still a little bit away, but what are the battles we're going to have to look for? Who are really going to be pushing for either a roster spot or a, you know, rotational playing time spot? I will talk about those in just a moment. And I will count down the top five in descending order. But before I do that, take a minute, if you would, not even a minute, take five seconds, click the like button below. I would really appreciate it. Helps the show, helps me, and shows just some appreciation for the work to put this in and make sure there's new content available for you guys every day. Uh, If you haven't already, click subscribe and tell someone about the show. Share the channel, share the show, uh, promote it. Word of mouth is always the best way for people to find out about something. And hopefully it's good enough that you want to tell somebody about it. So I appreciate all that you guys can do to help people find out about it. As you know, we've donated over $260,000 to charity over the years and would love to to make this a banner year for our donation. So uh, thanks for helping out. Another way you can support the show is become a YouTube member. The link is in the description of the video. It's easy to do. It's a great way to to kind of, you know, become part of our community more officially. And also at Patreon, patreon.com slash hawkblogger. That gets you the audio version of these podcasts with no ads. Of course, this week I'm not doing audio versions. So uh, you do miss out this particular week. But every other time I do these shows, you get an audio version that's ad free by being a Patreon member. And you get access to the Slack channel. So all that good stuff is available for patreon.com slash Hawkblogger members. All right, let's get it right into it. Um, I did a while back my first 53-man projected roster for the Seahawks. And at some point, I will do my next projection, probably closer to camp. We'll kind of come back and do that again. But we're starting to see a little bit more clarity about where there's going to be potential potential positional battles on this roster in training camp. And uh, I will tell you a couple of those competitions that I chose not to include in my top five. So these call these honorable mention, honorable mention uh, battles that I think are going to be happening in camp. All right. So uh Included, uh, not included, Geno Smith versus Sam Howell. I don't think this is a battle. The team has made it clear it is not a battle, but there'll absolutely be some battling going on, especially once you know you get to the scrimmage, once you get to live action in the in the preseason games. You're probably going to see a lot of Sam Howell in those games, and I would expect him to play pretty well. And for that to be something that's a conversation that will not let up even throughout the year, even if unless, you know, even if Gino's playing really well, I still think there'll be some conversation about Sam Howell, but I do not have that in my top five of training camp battles. Um, I do not, I do not have uh, wide receiver six on my top training camp battles. I think it's a legitimate one to keep an eye on. Uh, but I'm going to talk about another battle relative to that position in a second. Um, there is a, 
uh, I think there's a battle at tight end that we, we could talk about. That is Jack Westover, Tyler Mayberry, uh, Brady Russell. That one's pretty close. And who knows? I might even change my mind as I go through these top five. I might not be able to stick to the five I already came up with. But that one's close. That's on the cutting edge because I think Noah Fant, Farrah Brown, and A.J. Barner are locks. But there is the potential. I mean, I think Jack Westover, Tyler Mayberry, and Brady Russell. Mayberry and Russell both had time on the roster last year. Jack Westover obviously has clear connection to Ryan Grubb. And there could be some reason that they want to keep more than three tight ends. If they do, then that battle becomes a little bit more interesting. For right now, I have them projected at keeping three tight ends, which makes it a little less likely that they would keep one of those other guys. I think if they keep more than that, then I think one of them likely is going to be more of a special teams keeper and potentially someone that they want to play as an H back, which is something Jack Westover certainly is capable of doing. Um, because right now I only have them keeping four running backs and a lot of times they've kept five. So that's another battle I am not including. So then which battles am I including? Well, let me, let me tell you another one that I am not including. I am not including the inside linebacker room, uh, the backup, the t basically t uh, inside linebacker three or four. I think that Tyrese Knight, Drake Thomas, John Radigan, Patrick O'Connell, Easton Gibbs, if you want to put Josh Onu, uh, Giagu in there. Yeah, I just, I don't think that it's going to be that material of a battle. I think Tyrese Knight has a roster spot. I think John Radigan and Patrick O'Connell um, likely have roster spots. And so I'm not, I'm not, and I just am not sure that that's going to be a really key battle for this roster, but it will be a battle that goes on. Um, so let's start then with the top five. And again, I reserve the right to change my mind. I might switch this up on you as we go through it, but the fifth, Biggest battle I have got on this roster heading into camp is, is at the, um, is at the defensive, uh, sorry, the, <laughs> I have my own, my own notes are messing me up. The, the number five battle I have got on this roster is at um, center. So uh, Olo Olo Timmy and Nick Harris, I do not believe this is going to be a very close battle. That's why I've got it ranked fifth. But I do think that it is a battle that's going to be really important to keep an eye on to make sure that the Seahawks get the starting center that they're looking forward to. And I think that while I expect Olo Olo Timmy to win this battle pretty handily, uh, it is something that we will know much more once pads get on. This is something where Olu Olu Timmy uh, was not as strong with pads on last year in terms of functional strength. Uh, this might be where Nick Harris shows up a little bit more. And so I think it's such an important position and there's not a lot of other options out there that I think this is one to keep an eye on once pads start coming on and we start hearing how those guys are doing in camp. So that's my number five. And for what it's worth, there are a number of these battles that are related to the same position group, but that's the number five is, is the center position. Number four, number four for me in this is the, is the cornerback five and six battle. And really you could kind of call it cornerback six. I currently have the Seahawk keeping six cornerbacks and there's four that I consider locks Devin Witherspoon, Reek Woolen, Trey Brown, and Mike Jackson. All right. That leaves three guys in Artie Burns, DJ James, and Nehemiah Pritchett, the two rookies battling for two spots. And that doesn't include Lance Boykin, who has been 
someone that a lot of people speak highly of or any of the undrafted free agents like Roe Torrance or Carlton Johnson or Andrew Whitaker. So I think this is going to be a key battle to monitor. It's a number four battle that I've got heading into camps into camp. Artie Burns being the veteran helps and hurts for him. The team knows what they can get out of him. Carl Scott knows him. The team brought him back for a reason. He played reasonably well last year. He can play inside and he can play outside. So from that angle, he has an edge. On the other hand, he's not part of the long-term plan for the position. And he's only on a one-year deal. And so if DJ James and EMI Pritchett both show significant promise, the team could decide, well, we are going to keep both of those guys on our roster and let the veteran walk in RD Burns. So I think this one could be key. So as of now, we have not heard almost anything about the two rookie corners making any plays or standing out. That doesn't necessarily bode well, but it's also they can't really make plays at this point in camp for the most part. So that's one to keep an eye on. Um, I think that's the number four battle that uh, is worth monitoring. It's also worth monitoring just because these are new blood players because if DJ James and Nehemiah Pritchett do not look like guys that are going to be longer term answers or look like big question marks that dramatically increases the chances that the Seahawks would look to bring back a guy like Trey Brown, who's entering the last year of his deal, or maybe a little less, less likely, but also maybe Mike Jackson, who is entering the last year of his deal. As of now, you kind of expect them both to go. But if DJ James and Nehemiah Pritchett don't make this roster, it's a possibility. I think one of them is pretty likely to make it. But if they both don't make it or they're practice squad guys or whatever, they're just not looking promising, then that could really change the future of this position beyond this year. So that's part of why that ranks uh, number four on my list of camp battles. Number three. Number three on the list of camp battles is going to be on the other side of the ball. It is going to be the wide receiver five position. So I mentioned wide receiver six did not make my list. I do have the team keeping six receivers, but I think the real battle is what's going to happen at five. And as of now, I have Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith and Jigba and Jake Bobo as locks to make this team. We'll see if that's the case. I think Bobo is going to have to prove himself again, but he is a not only a talented receiver that is, you know, low price under club control and is a good blocker, but he's also a good special teams player. So I just don't see a path where Jake Bobo is not on this roster. And so that's four names. So then it's who's number five. And historically, the Seahawks just have not really gotten many snaps or really many targets for anyone past the top three receivers, to be really honest, even Jake Bobo last year as the fourth receiver. I mean, just got like 20 odd targets or something like that. 30, odd, whatever it was, it was a very small number of targets. And so when you get to the fifth receiver, you're talking about basically no targets. I mean, I think D Eskridge and there's one other guy had one target last year or something <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's just, it's really, it's not a position that's historically for the Seahawks gotten many snaps. It's usually a special teams related role. And at the same time this year, there's some pretty interesting competition. I mentioned D Eskridge. He's in, you know, last year and certainly has had injury problems. John Schneider's in his court. will want him to get the best chance possible. But they've got LaVisca Chenault that they signed, um, has been in the league, has shown real ability as an after-the-catch, yards-after-catch guy. He's also been a kick returner and uh, an explosive one at that. But I think the guy to keep an eye on is Derek Young. He's always the guy that the other receivers mention early on. He's a guy that other players, um, you know, whether it's Jarek Reed or others, have mentioned when I do interviews. And so I think there's going to be a real battle between Derek Young, the Visca Chenault, and D. Eskridge for really that fifth receiver spot. And 
you could throw Aesop Winston into that. You might even be able to throw Cody White or Hayden Hatton into that. A lot of people like Cody White. But I think this is going to be a three-man battle for two spots. And I my odds on favorite there is Derek Young, but it's going to be interesting. That one's going to be that could go a lot of different directions. So that one's my number three battle heading into camp. My number two battle in camp is going to be coming at the edge position. And this is one where I honestly will have to see how Mike McDonald is utilizing players and different sub packages to know how many edges he's going to keep versus how many defensive linemen, all that kind of stuff. But Draymond Jones factors into this because he's been playing with the outside linebacker slash edge players in practice so far. He also slides inside, so he kind of counts as both. I think he is going to be a base down edge, and I'm generally just counting him as an edge player. And so as of right now, I have the Seahawks keeping five edge players. and the four guys that I consider locks to be kept are Uchenna Nuosu, Boye Mafe, Draymond Jones, and Derek Hall. Now, maybe Derek Hall is too, it's too, uh, what's the word, generous to say he's a lock. He was a pretty bad rookie. I mean, I almost want to say awful, but maybe that's too harsh. He just was, he was a, non-factor as a rookie, but he was a second round pick. If I find it very hard to believe this team would walk away, cut a second round pick at a training camp in year two. That just seems very unlikely. So it's not based on performance that he's a lock. I think it's based off of draft position, but if he is, that's four players, Echenna Nuosu, Boye Mafe, Draymond Jones, and Derek Hall. That leaves one spot for edge and Daryl Taylor would be the odds on favorite, but Daryl Taylor is in the last year of his deal. And I'm very curious about an undrafted free agent named Nelson Caesar. I think that there is a chance that if he shows promise, I think there's a chance that he could push Daryl Taylor off this roster. Daryl Daryl Taylor has a $3 million cap savings associated with him not making this squad or potentially being traded, or any number of things, that if Nelson Caesar can show he's he's one of the top undrafted free agents, if he can kind of show up in camp, that Daryl Taylor may be on the outside looking in. So I have that as my number two position battle heading into camp. Which leaves my number one battle in camp should not be a huge surprise, but it comes at right guard. It comes at right guard and it is going to be, I think, a very active battle between three players. I think we are going to see, obviously, Christian Haynes, the rookie draft pick in the third round, who I think a lot of people have penciled in as the starter, but so far has been running with the second string. You've got Anthony Bradford, who started a number of games for the Seahawks last year at right guard. And you've got the guy who's actually been running with the first string, all of OTAs and mini camps while Anthony Bradford's been out and ahead of Christian Haynes, and that is McClendon Curtis. So that is a three-man battle. I would like to think Christian Haynes will win that job. But he is a rookie and they might choose like if Anthony Bradford does his job well, if you know, it's possible that could go a different direction. I think it's the hardest one to project. I think it would be the best thing for the Seahawks if Christian Haynes wins that battle. But but we will find out. And so that's going to be one that, you know, game to game. I don't think we'll really know for sure till we get late in the preseason who's going to win that one. And it's going to have a huge impact. This is for a starting position. A lot of these other battles, the reason that they rank lower for me is these aren't for starting positions. These are for making rosters or, you know, uh, getting snaps potentially rotationally, but 
none of these other battles are really for a starting spot other than the Olu Olu with Timmy one with Nick Harris. I have that lower just because I think that it's very clear who's going to win it, but it is a very key one to monitor going into um, training camp. So those are my top five. And I, I should mention a few other battles to keep an eye on. These are not in the top five, but they're things that I'm going to be watching. Um, the first one is safety. And, you know, I could easily be swayed to switch my my center, my number five spot with the safety one, because we're going to have this battle between, I think the top three players are locked. I think Julian Love, Rayshon Jenkins, and Kayvon Wallace are locked. But that number four safety, I would have put my money on Jarek Reed, but I think he's going to be on PUP, is my guess, that he's going to be on the physically unable to unable to perform list, which means that he will not be part of training camp. He will come back during the season and they can kind of just hide him on the pup list. But without him there, there are three guys at least that I think are going to be really actively fighting for a roster spot. Uh, one of them is Kobe Bryant. One of them is Jonathan Sutherland. And a third, which not as many people know, is Ty Okada. I think all three of those guys have a very strong case to make the football team, both as special teams players and as safeties. And I think it'll be a very hard cut to let those guys go. I think a guy like Sutherland or Akata are almost certainly be practice squad candidates if they were cut. You know, Kobe Bryant, I don't know if he would make it to practice squad. I'm not sure if these other guys would. Remember last year, the Arizona Cardinals signed what was a promising safety off the Seahawks practice squad and kept him on their roster. Um, that could happen again, because I think Sutherland is a very good prospect. I, I, I think he might be the best of the three. Kobe Bryant's got the bigger name recognition and he was a drafted player. So there'll be a little bit more investment in him, but that's going to be another one. The reason I, I didn't end up making it on my top five is again, this is just to make the roster and likely not play almost any snaps or very many snaps. So I don't know how critical this battle is, but it's going to be a fierce one um, for sure. So safety is another one. Another one towards the bottom of the roster, maybe not as interesting to some people. I have some curiosity about the nose tackle position. Uh, Jonathan Hankins was signed. He's a known quantity, obviously in dirty brought him here, recruited him here. And that's why he's here. Cameron Young is a guy that I think people assume is going to be on the team after being a rookie last year, but there's Matt Gotell as well. And Matt Gotell has been on the practice squad. He's a 340 pound nose tackle. I think that the battle between Cam Young and Matt Gotell to be the backups to Jonathan Hankins is going to be one to watch. Um, again, I don't think these guys are going to get a bunch of snaps, but I do think that that's going to be an interesting battle to watch along the way. So those are my training cap battles that I've got my eye on. What would you do differently? What would you rank differently? How would you rank them differently? Let me know in chat or in comments. I'd love to see your thoughts on this. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for training camp to begin and start to really learn more about how these guys perform uh, on the on the practice field in preseason games and others. So until then, uh, or actually really until tomorrow when we get the next episode up, uh, I am Brian M. Hauser. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Hawk Blogger. Please give the show a like and click subscribe. And look forward to seeing you when I see you next. Until then... This has been another episode of Hawk Blogger Mornings.